everyone, I'm Adriza. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about three books that I read due to internet peer pressure, The Internet Sensation by Lauren Asher called Dreamland Billionaires. Her first book is The Fine Print, second book is named as Terms and Conditions and the third book is Final Offer. To be honest, I did not want to give into the internet peer pressure and read it because it was all over the place and everybody was hyping the book so much that uh, I was a little skeptical about whether I should be buying physical copies and investing in physical uh, space for these books. So I decided to invest in Kindle, read the books online, read the books in ebook format and then see whether I wanted to have their physical copies in the first place in my bookshelves. And I did not buy their physical copies yet. So that says something. But while diving into the books, let me tell you something a little bit about this universe in which the book is set. Dreamland Billionaires, the word Dreamland refers to this huge company that these three brothers have. They have inherited this company from their grandfather called Brady Kane, who came to United States of America from Ireland with absolutely nothing but a dream and he has built the company from ground up. Dreamland is like Disney in our world, like how Disney has these subscriptions, how Disney has these uh, beautiful theme parks, how Disney has movies and princesses and everything else uh, out in the world. Same thing in this fiction universe is headed by Dreamland. Now, Brady Kane is a grandfather who suddenly dies and leaves billions of dollars to his three grandsons, but they have conditions that they need to fulfill, like each individually, in order to inherit shares of the company, also billions of dollars as inheritance. In the first book, we start off with the youngest Kane brother, whose name is Rowan. Rowan was a very weird character to understand. Liking him took a little time. Uh, he is in the business of creating fairy tales and he is sent to the Dreamland themed park in Florida. Uh, they are based in Chicago, so he has to move all the way to Florida and he has to make one project which has to be outstanding and wow everyone in order to gain his part of the inheritance and in order to gain his part of the shares. In the process, he meets this employee of Dreamland Florida who is named Zara and she has always wanted to be a creator. She's always wanted to create something. But due to circumstances have always been against her and thus she has unable to fulfill her wishes till now. And they start off with a grumpy sunshine romance. This book was so, 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 so slow that I wanted to give up on this entire series as a whole on multiple occasions. Not that the characters are not uh, beautifully written. The characters are well written. There are multiple uh, things which need to be discussed like alcoholic abuse by uh, the father of the brothers, uh, gaslighting and cheating in relationships by Zara's ex and so on and so forth. There are topics that the book deals with, yes, but the book is so slow that there were on multiple occasions I did not want to read the book at all. The book is a nice book, but will I reread it? Absolutely not. There are certain books that I say that I will not reread, but I oftentimes pick them up. But this is one of those books that I will definitely not pick up at all. Coming to the second book, it's termed as Terms and Conditions. And we are dealing with the oldest Kane brother whose uh, name is Declan. And the female FMC, the female uh, MC is Iris. She is his assistant. Declan is in his mid-30s. 
and uh, he is supposed to become the CEO and inherit a lot of shares and he is up against his alcoholic abusive father. His father does not leave, want to leave his position as CEO so he's fighting tooth and nail and Declan has a particular job which involves him marrying someone, settling down and producing an heir for the dreamland universe uh, for him to inherit his part of the shares and become CEO. He delegates the entire job to his assistant Iris who is in her early 20s. He tells her, look, I need you to find me a person who is fertile, who, uh, who, has who has symmetrical enough features to be deemed as beautiful and that's pretty much it. She has to know that this is a contractual thing and we will be having a child through IVF so I will not be having any emotions involved in the first place because he's a workaholic and he's rude and he has this entire persona going on that I'm extremely unapproachable. Declan is a likable character but the most likable character I think is Iris because she's also dyslexic and has her own troubles with her family dynamic and she has commitment and trust issues because on multiple locations she has been let down by the men in her life so it's very difficult for her to uh, come out and actually trust someone in her life. This book had so much potential but was such a big letdown because when it comes to the pacing of the books, the first book had the speed of a tortoise and the second book had the speed of an hare and it just, it was jumping all over the place. Abrupt ending to chapters, uh, very, very fast writing and timelines. I did not get enough opportunity for me to savor the story as to what is going on and I was disappointed again. <laughs> the third book is called The Final Offer by again Laura Nasher and we are dealing with middle child syndrome over here. We are dealing with Callahan Kane who is also known as Cal. He's a washed up athlete who has addiction issues. Uh, he has addiction to drugs and alcohol and sex. Uh, we also see the FMC is Alana Castillo, who is his childhood friend. This is a second chance romance. And honestly, I did not think I would like this book as much as I did because I am not a fan of second chance romances at all. I don't believe in giving second chances to anybody in real life, let alone my fictional characters. This was a much better book in comparison to the first book. Uh, the task that is given to Cal is that he has to spend one summer in Lake Visteria in the lake house that is owned by his grandfather and when he goes back to Lake Visteria he realizes that his ex-girlfriend is living there with her daughter called Cammie. Uh, it was a good book but usually when there is a child involved in second chance romances the child gets a lot of screen time a lot of read time and we enjoy those little tidbits and i enjoyed those little tidbits with cami and i would have enjoyed the book a little bit more had there been an extensive presence of the child on the pages because it made the book bearable and that is one of the major reasons i like the book i also liked how it dealt with addiction a little bit uh, more effort could have been put by the author in making sure the addiction process is well understood by the readers because not everyone will. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it was a four star read for me because the family dynamics in all the three books and in, of all the characters, of all the six characters there um, are well written. Do I recommend you to read the book? Sure, can you go without reading the book? That's true as well. And I am disappointed because I thought with the amount of hype this book is getting on the internet, maybe it was worth my time. Uh, it was just not my cup of tea. I'm a little saddened by that. I want to read her other books that are also based on the same universe. Uh, I'll definitely read them and let you know how I felt about them. Next time, I'll see you with another book that I read recently. I hope you like the video. Thank you and bye.